Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest and welcome to my kitchen studio. Over the past few weeks, we've been looking at different kinds of food scraps that can be used to create color in your natural dye practice. Today, I'd like to look at another food source and that is soy milk. We've been touching on it over many videos as a way to create a binding environment for natural colors who adhere better to fiber. But over the next few weeks, we're gonna be looking at soy milk as a medium for allowing us to print using natural color on fiber. So let's dive a little deeper into the magic of soy milk. I've been using soy milk in my natural dye practice since the very beginning. It was a wonderfully easy and accessible way to grab the binding power of the protein found in soy milk to allow there to be a better connection between natural color and fiber. And because soy milk is so easily accessible, it just seemed a whole heck of a lot less daunting than diving into the world of mordants, and those are metal salts. So I happily welcomed soy milk into my practice. Now, as time has gone on, I have expanded and have found the benefits of using metal salts as mordants, but I still will go back to soy milk as a way in which to create a binding environment for fiber. Now, the last couple of weeks, we've seen videos where I've used soy milk to prepare the fiber. And today, I'd like to start looking at how the binding power of soy milk can be used to create patterns on fiber. In my own art practice, I'm becoming increasingly interested in pattern. So I've been doing a lot of exploring on my own. And for the next few weeks, I'd like to share with you a few different ways in which you can use soy milk to work on surface design with natural color. And since we've been working in the kitchen with things like food scraps, onion skins, and avocado skins and stones, I'd like to stick with using tannin-rich dye sources that are in our kitchen, and that will be looking at teas as a great way to capture some really warm, neutral colors in your palette. So today, I'd like to start with using soy milk as a paint. And we're just gonna make very simple designs and then use tea as our natural color to dye with. So let's look at the supplies now. The supplies are so simple, it almost looks like I'm gonna be cooking something. So here's our star and that is going to be soy milk. You're always going to want to use unsweetened soy milk. You want nothing more than the soy itself. So make sure that you look for something that's unsweetened. I always try to get organic as well because I know that I'm really just getting soy. The fiber that I'm gonna be using is cotton, 100% natural. This is not pre-treated with any mordant. You will want to wash or scour it first, but you want to keep it without doing any mordant or binding on it because that's what the soy milk's going to do. We're basically going to be creating patterns of binder through the soy milk that will then pick up the dye in a different way. The marking tools I decide to use are these little stenciling brushes very simple i'm going to keep it easy you'll see that it is a little harder to see where you are working because soy milk is white on white fiber so i like to do something that i know is very very easy and i'm a big fan of geometric shapes anyway however you can use stencils you can use brushes you can freehand completely up to you but this is one very easy way to make a polka dot pattern. I will need some kind of a small bowl, a measuring spoon. We're going to be doing a 
two to three ratio, two tablespoons of soy milk to three tablespoons of water. We're gonna water it down a little bit just so it's not quite as strong. And then today I'm gonna to be using tea. And this is a loose leaf tea that I've had. It is black tea. You can use any tea that you want and I recommend that you try different teas out because they will create different colors. Roybus, for example, has a beautiful orangish cast to it, but we'll be using black tea with our design today. So fiber prep, as I mentioned, involves making sure to wash your fiber prior to using it, but do not do any pretreatment with any kind of a mordant on it. The second step is going to be ironing our fiber, and that is so that we have a nice smooth surface in order to create our prints on. You will want to make sure that your fiber is not going to move while you work on it. So I have a couple of different options. You can simply use painter's tape to tape your fiber to your countertop or any surface that you're working on. I've also created a printing pad that I'd like to show you and this will be useful over the next couple of weeks. So it's something that I built at home, I didn't spend a lot of money on, and I was able to make it custom in terms of size based upon some of the products that I used in order to build it. So let me quickly show you that, and then we'll get started. So this is my homemade printing pad. Pretty simple to make. I used this cosplay foam because it was relatively inexpensive. It has a good firmness. You don't want it to be too soft, but just to give a little bit of give as you're printing on your fiber. And all I did was cut and tape the size that I wanted. This piece here, I believe is a 30 by 30. And then I covered it with some canvas. Now I happen to have a roll of canvas, but you can use a painter's drop cloth or anything that's not very expensive just to put a cover over the top of it. Then I'm going to be using a piece of just scrap sheet really, and you can see it's already been used. And this is just to create a smooth layer between the surface here and also a place that it will absorb some of the soy milk that goes through my fiber that I'm going to be using here. And then I can remove this. I won't have ruined my pad and I can just throw this in the wash and use it again. Now all I did on the back here is use some staples to staple this into the foam and I taped two pieces of foam together using duct tape. So I was able to make a bit of a larger piece, a nice square shape, which will give me room for my fiber. Just simple staples worked perfectly. They did poke through in places, but not enough to make any difference, and I just got this nice surface. What's also nice about using this printing pad is that you can use tacks, either thumb tacks or these T tacks, in order to stretch and attach your fiber to the pad. They will beautifully just poke into the foam like this and that'll allow you to have your fiber stretched and staying still. You can also use painter's tape in order to put the edges down as well. And if you decide not to make a printing pad for today's project, that's fine. You can simply use painter's tape to stretch and fasten your fiber to a surface like a countertop. You just don't want your fiber moving around while you're doing your printing. So let's prepare our pad and get going.
Now using tea as a natural color is as easy as brewing tea. You're gonna to wanna to make it super strong. You can save your tea bags and repurpose the old tea leaves as a, another way to use food scrap or as I'm doing today, I happen to have some loose leaf tea that I'm gonna use. I will make it stronger than I would for a cup of tea and then I'm also going to save it and that is because we're going to need to use it in next week's video not as a hot tea but as a cold tea process so feel free to try different kinds of teas I'm using black tea but you can also use green or rooibos so get wild with the different kind of teas that you're going to use There you have it. Look at that. And how simple was that process? It really makes a huge difference. You can just see how the soy milk acts as such a fantastic binder to grab more of that natural color. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I will show you the backside. It is much lighter. And that is because it didn't go all the way through or it didn't go through much at all. So actually, I like that because it ends up being just really a one-sided print. If you wanted to saturate more, you probably could get a stronger print on the back side. But I like it just the way it is. Here is the same kind of cloth and I did it freehand. I just painted sort of circles. I didn't have any brush per se, but you can see that it worked just as well. It has that beautiful pink cast. So comparing the tea to the avocado stone, but look, really, really works well with tannin rich dyes and soy milk. I love making natural dyeing super easy and accessible. And that's one of the reasons why staying in the kitchen and looking at dye sources that come from food and food scraps can just broaden this practice for more people. And since this is how I started, it really lights that flame that then takes you down the rabbit hole, as we all know, of natural color. Now next week, we're gonna continue looking at soy milk. But this time, we're going to look at a way to use it as a resist method of printing. So I hope you have a fantastic week. Remember to subscribe and give thumbs up to any videos that you enjoy. It really helps me to continue to produce tutorials here in this realm and I just love sharing it with as many people as possible. So thanks again, and I will see you at Color Quest next Friday. Or Yubra Buena, all different. Uh, <laughs> um, 
whatever you have